This is the SIM driver. And if you don't know what the acronym SIM stands for, it stands for Shape in Motion. But you could well be forgiven for thinking that SIM on there means it's very simple to adjust, and it actually is. The weight track that has been taken in lots of different lines and direction by TaylorMade over the last few years is now simplified back to one track behind the face here and running parallel to it. Now, before we start the process of showing you how to adjust your new SIM driver, a quick word on what you're actually getting in this driver and some things that are actually adjustable and there's other things that seem adjustable but they're actually not. For instance, this, this uh, big protruding inertia generator here running heel to toe at a 20 degree angle. This advances aerodynamics in the golf club with a 12 gram weight on the back here and if you notice this weight actually has a screw. It is removable with your tailor-made wrench but our advice is really never to touch this. It's already optimized by tailor-made engineers to knock about 200 rpm of spin off your golf ball relative to the old m5 driver and that increases speed and thus distance and still makes it very forgiving so let's trust the engineers on that one and leave this screw in place turning around to the face here and the speed injected twist face is also in the same it has blue screws this time which if you look closely also seem to have little screws in there and seem to be removable but again they're not and best really not to touch those and of course concealed in this driver you've got the speed pocket you've got inverted cone technology in behind the face also driving ball speed and forgiveness so really whatever way you set up this driver you've pretty much all the bases covered in a sim driver so let's get adjusting and with a simple adjustment wrench like this you can raise or lower the loft you can give this sim driver a draw or a fade bias and you can change things like trajectory and spin the driver puts on the golf ball so if you've never used the adjustment wrench before let's start with showing you how to do this so first of all let's look at the opening and locking mechanisms of the screws well to open any screw you simply place the wrench in the top of the screw like that and you turn it anti-clockwise like this and then conversely to tighten the screw you just simply turn it clockwise now this screw here that secures the shaft in place at the hosel, they're all the same really. But when fully tightened, it makes an audible click. Don't let that put you off or think you've broken something. It's basically to let you know that the sleeve is fully and safely locked in place and it helps you to avoid over tightening. There's the click. Now we have two screws in the sim here which we can potentially adjust. So let's look at each screw individually. Let's go ahead and loosen the shaft screw now when fully opened here we go let me just ease it off the head can be easily removed from the shaft and when you do that you'll notice numbers and settings on the tip of the shaft and these indicate some of the different loft lie and face angle options you can choose tailor-made use what's called a four degree tip adapter and at the time of manufacture an assembly of the shaft it will be set to the standard loft position on the shaft so this being a 10.5 degree driver when the standard loft is lined up with this little arrow here the loft is 10.5 degrees the lie angle is a standard 56 degrees and the face angle is totally square now there are actually 12 different notches or movements on this sleeve and each one either increases or decreases loft by a half or three quarters of a degree. So what would happen if we reduce loft? Well, if we rotate from the standard position all the way to this lower position here and reattached our head with the arrow lining up, we're effectively reducing the loft of the driver by two degrees. So it then sets up effectively like an 8.5 degree driver. At this setting though, the face is also now going to be four degrees more open than normal. The lie angle will be 58 degrees. So it's really going to want to put a fade 
bias our left to right trajectory on any shots. At this setting, it will also reduce the amount of spin the driver puts on the golf ball by about 400 RPM. Now conversely, if we rotate it from the standard all the way to the higher position here and reattach the head, it would effectively increase the loft of this 10.5 degree driver to 12.5 degrees. Now in doing this, you also shut the face four degrees more closed than normal. Again, the lie angle goes up to 58 degrees, and this time you add about 400 RPM of spin to your shots. So this will really put a draw bias or right to left bias on your driver. Now, you don't have to adjust all the way to the lower or higher settings. You can adjust incrementally along the little notches here in between to make the changes more gradually. Now, if you spin the tip 180 degrees from the standard loft, you'll come to a position here that says UPRT or upright lie. You can actually also secure the shaft in this position. And this time the loft is back at standard, that's 10.5 degree, degrees again, but now the club sits four degrees more upright and the lie angle has changed from 56 degrees to its maximum 60 degrees. Now you'll find this sets the club up for a draw, but it's a lot more subtle than even if it was put in the higher setting that I just mentioned. Again, from this upright lie setting, you can make the loft lower or higher incrementally along those notches, again, to make the changes a little more subtly. Now, we are talking about increasing and decreasing loft producing a draw or fade bias but really on the sim driver the shot shape let me just put the shaft down here is affected most by the position of this 10 gram sliding weight here in the sims new simplified weight track now the standard or default position for this weight is right here right in the middle of the rail the angle of this inertia generator can throw you off at first of all but the best way to find this neutral position is to use these three little uh, dash markings these plastic dash markings here to line it up the weights again this weight again is loosened or tightened with the same tool as before and again when you secure it fully there's an audible click there's the click when fully tightened now if you want to set your sim driver up to produce its maximum draw, for instance. You can open the weight and slide it all the way over to the heel here. See, it says draw on here. Or you can secure it anywhere in between along the track. It's actually a very smooth track. There's no notches or grooves in it uh, to produce a more subtle draw. So if you wanted a subtle draw, you could just attach it there, for instance. And vice versa, if you want to hit a fade uh, with your sim out here, move the weight out towards the toe you'll see the word fade here and again you can secure it here if you want a maximum fade or anywhere in between that fade point and the middle to make it more gradual so basically that is how to adjust your sim driver what you have here is tailor-made giving you the very optimal setup for distance and forgiveness and then you can play with the loft lie draw or fade settings to really appreciate the results and dial in your optimal settings. You're going to gain yards with your sim driver straight off the bat, that is actually a given, but you could essentially solve your hook or your slice or your draw or your fade into the bargain with the correct setting on this driver and who wouldn't love that? And it's very important to remember that you can adjust your driver on the range or at any time before or after you're around the golf, but just not during it. Now if you enjoy this video please do press like and subscribe to the Golf Bitter YouTube channel. Follow us every day on Golf Bitter Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. From me for now though it's Donald out.